This is the iPhone 12 mini and I'm about to ruin this whole review by saying it now. This is possibly one of the best iPhones of all time, apart from maybe one thing. Okay, so I've already said it in the intro, but I really love the iPhone 12 mini. I really just enjoy this smaller sized phone. And I'm one of those people who has been going on for years to friends that I hoped Apple would actually launch a smaller iPhone and it's finally here. Now, this may not be the phone for you because I know a lot of people really love bigger and bigger iPhones. My wife has the 11 Pro Max and she really likes that size. But for me, even the standard 11 was just slightly too big for my pockets. If you're a guy or a girl who puts your phone in your pockets, you'll know exactly what I mean. Finally, this is a phone that you can fit in one hand, you can type with one hand, and it fits perfectly in your jeans. As we're a channel for creatives, this review is mainly going to be focusing on the cameras and video recording abilities of the iPhone 12 mini. If you're looking for a full review, maybe check out The Verge, Engadget or Knoopsie because they've got some great videos all about the detailed specs of this phone. But we're going to be covering the cameras, the video quality and just the size of this little phone. Now, that said, if you're not sure what's new in the iPhone 12 this year, there are a few big improvements. First of all, they've now got 5G in all of the iPhone 12 lineup, including the iPhone 12 mini. Now, I'm in like the second or third largest city in the UK, and I still can't get 5G on the three network here. So I've actually turned 5G off on this device to save battery life. The 4G coverage is really good here, and we've got super fast Wi-Fi at home and in the office. So 5G doesn't really bother me. I might turn this on if I'm visiting London, but at the moment, I'm gonna keep it turned off. Next up, they've actually changed the design of the iPhone and it has much more of a squared off look to it. It's very reminiscent of the iPhone 5 phones that I used to really, really love. They've also updated the glass on the iPhone 12, so it's now four times stronger than the iPhone 11s. So that means it can take more knocks, drops, and scratches than ever before. So how does this phone actually feel in the hands? Well, you know, I'm coming from an iPhone 11 Pro, and as you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the 11 Pro. And this one, you know, it just fits in the hand perfectly. For the first time in a long time, you can now reach every corner of your device with your thumb. You can text with one hand again, and I just really like that. As I've mentioned in the intro, it also fits perfectly in any of your pockets. So even though the iPhone 11 wasn't huge, it was just slightly too big for me. So I'm really enjoying this new mini size. So if you watch the channel, you'll know I actually film a lot using the iPhone. So that was one of the main reasons I was interested in upgrading this year. For the first time in an iPhone, you can now film in 10-bit Dolby Vision. So that means for the first time, you can actually color correct and grade your iPhone footage, which is absolutely incredible. You can film 4K up to 60 frames a second and you can edit the footage. Now in the mini version and the standard 12, you can only film up to 30 frames a second in Dolby Vision. In the pro versions, you can film up to 60. But you know, I'm pretty impressed with that. And I'll show you some of the footage coming out with this phone. It's absolutely fantastic. And I just love that you can color grade iPhone footage. It's absolutely insane. Now, one thing you lose if you go for the 12 or 12 mini is that zoom lens. And you know what, I'm not too fussed about that. I've owned the iPhone 11 Pro for over a year and I probably used the zoom lens maybe like five or six times. I just don't think the zoom lens on an iPhone is very good. If you're used to mirrorless cameras, when you use a zoom lens, you get that nice blurry background when you zoom in. It's just what you get out of using a full frame camera or, or a decent lens. But with the zoom lens on the iPhone 11 Pro and 12 Pro, it just feels like a digital zoom. So I'm not really interested in using it for photo or video. So actually not having it on this camera, I wasn't too fussed. I mainly use the ultra wide and the wide lens and they both look fantastic this year on the 12. So what's new in the cameras this year? Well, we've now got an f1.6 
Fuchs lens for all of the wide cameras in all of the iPhone 12s. So that's really impressive. That means not only will you get slightly more background blur in your shots, but you'll also get really good low light performance. Secondly, they've added 10-bit support in Dolby Vision, which is absolutely crazy. As I mentioned before, this is the first time you can really color grade iPhone footage. So let me show you some examples of how good this uh, HDR footage looks on the iPhone. Now I was super excited to see that because it means for the first time you can really edit your iPhone footage, you can color grade, you can add LUTs and your iPhone footage won't be destroyed. If you've ever filmed on your iPhone and brought that footage into Premiere Final Cut, you'll know in the past, as soon as you started playing around with the contrast or the brightness or the saturation, the footage would just get destroyed and look, look all muddy. Well, I'm pleased to say with this 10-bit footage, you can color grade, you can add LUTs and the footage still looks really, really good. So as someone who's into filming and editing, that's really impressive. But there is a bit of an issue with this HDR footage that I think is actually going to affect a lot of people. Now, when you film with Dolby Vision on an iPhone, it looks and displays perfectly on your iPhone. It will look fine on your iPad. And if you've got a 4K HDR TV, it will look good there too. But if you don't really know about cameras, if you don't understand this and you send it to someone who's maybe got an iPhone 6 or they've got a TV without HDR capability, the footage will look really blown out. And there isn't Dolby Vision support yet, even in Final Cut. Now you can edit, of course, this footage in Final Cut. And if you wanna learn how to edit it the right way, make sure you click up here or subscribe to the channel to see that video. But essentially, if you upload a clip from your iPhone at the moment to Facebook, for example, it will upload and it will be completely blown out. So I actually think this is gonna cause some issues for just some casual users. They're gonna be filming on their iPhone, they're gonna think this looks incredible, they're gonna send it or upload it to social networks and it's gonna be completely blown out and they're not gonna really understand why. So I'm in two minds. You know, Apple actually has HDR on by default. I think they should have probably had it off by default. And then if you're more of a pro or you're into editing, you could have switched it on. So let me know what you think about this and what do you think of the quality coming out of this iPhone 12 mini? I mean, I think it's absolutely insane that a device which is slightly bigger than a credit card can film in 4K, 60 frames a second, in Dolby Vision, up to 30 frames a second. That is absolutely insane. And it can do HD at 240 frames a second. And this is just something that you can fit in your pocket. That is crazy. Now, due to the f1.6 lens, there's also improved low light support. So you can get some really nice nighttime photography or nighttime videos coming from the camera. So check out this footage. The front facing camera on the iPhone 12 mini is also very good. So check out this footage. This is a 4K 30 test of the front facing camera on the iPhone 12 mini. How's the stabilization? How's the quality of the footage? I was also really impressed with the image stabilization coming from the iPhone 12 mini. And as I've mentioned, I've got the iPhone 11 Pro that I was using for a year before this. So I've done a few shots to compare how the iPhone 12 mini is versus the iPhone 11 Pro. So check out these shots.
so with all that said, it sounds almost like the perfect phone. And as I've said, I absolutely love this device. But there are two things which are really making me think whether I should keep the phone long term or not. I really do want to keep it. But the first thing is the green blob issue. Now, if you've used an iPhone 10 or 11 before and you film at night and you're filming maybe a shop window or a car, anything with lights in it, you'll notice you get these green lens flares, these green blobs that just appear all over your footage. And I'm not sure if it's worse than the iPhone 11 Pro, but the issue is still there and Apple really need to fix this. If you look at some of the footage here, you can see it. And I think sometimes these green blobs just really ruin your nighttime shots, especially because if you're filming shop windows and you, you pan left to right, there's nothing you can really do. You can't get rid of them. And I think really Apple needs to address this somehow, but I think it's a hardware issue. So it's gonna be something they're gonna to have to do in maybe the iPhone 13 or 14, unfortunately. Now, secondly, the big issue is battery life. Now, because this is a tiny, teeny phone, you're of course getting a much smaller battery in the iPhone 12 mini. And over the last three or four days, I've not been overly impressed with the battery life. Now, I have been using it more because it's a brand new phone. I've been excited to use it and I've been out filming. But on a couple of those days, I had 25% battery life by lunchtime. The phone died by 6 p.m. So I'm continuing to use it over the next few days just to see how it fares when I use it more normally. Now, I am a heavy user, I will say that. So I do think for most people, this will probably last you till maybe 9 p.m. if you use it for normal usage, like checking Facebook, watching a little bit of YouTube, that kind of thing. But if you're like me and you bought this because you want those really good cameras, you want that 10-bit footage, is this gonna last you long enough to do a bit of filming during the day and then still have enough to take your iPhone with you on a night? I mean, we're all using our iPhones to order Ubers. For some people, if you own a Tesla, this is the key to get in your car. So you can't have a phone anymore, which is gonna die really early on in the night. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this and I might do an updated video. At the moment, I love this size so much that I'm probably gonna keep it because, it, as I said, I just, I'm just in love with the size of this iPhone 12 mini. But I really do have to see if the battery life can keep up with my kind of workflow throughout the day. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel just in case we upload an updated review video in a few weeks time so I can let you know how the iPhone 12 mini battery has fared over that time period. But overall, I do love the iPhone mini. I think if you're a casual user, you won't have any problems with battery life. It will be kind of what you're used to. The, the size is amazing, the cameras are amazing. There's not really much else bad to say about this iPhone. And it's actually the cheapest new iPhone you can get. So for the price, the size, it really is almost the perfect iPhone. I think it's just the battery life which is holding me back. And we'll see how that is over the next few days. As I've said, at the first three to four days, it hasn't been amazing. It's been okay, but I'm going to keep using it. And hopefully this will be my main phone for 2020 and 2021. But keep a lookout because there may be an updated video coming very soon. <laughs>